In this video, we're going to add a wraparound and water stuff to our platformer game with Pygame and Python. Hey guys, John Alder here from CodingMe.com, and in the last couple of videos, we worked on gravity and jumping. In this video, we want to look at wraparound, and by that I mean when our Aspen character goes off the side of the screen on one direction, she appears on the other side of the screen coming from the other direction. We also want to look at what happens when Aspen falls in the water. We want to probably reset the game or do something. We'll look at that in this video as well. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Pi Game series. So check that out if you haven't so far. If you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, I've got the file that we've been working on on the last few videos. I've renamed it aspen underscore platform 6.py. It was aspen underscore platform 5.py in the last video. So we just renamed that. And I got to apologize if you guys can hear there's a screaming, crazy puppy in the background. You might hear her yapping from time to time. We just got a new puppy. Her name is Ivy. She's a Portuguese water dog. She is amazing, but she is so barky right now. So she's in her little pen just crying like the world is over. So if you can hear her from time to time, I apologize. Nothing we can do about it. It's just puppy life. So, okay. In this video, we want to wrap around the screen. So when our Aspen character, our other dog, in fact, let's come up here and run this guy. When our Aspen goes off the side of the screen, we want her to appear over here as if she just, you know, did a loop around or whatever. So as it is now, she just kind of falls into eternity and that's not what we want. So fairly simple to do this. Shouldn't take us all that long. So let's come down to our update function and underneath where we're calculating our kinematics, let's set up wrap around. Basically, this is a position problem. When Aspen goes off the screen in any direction, we want to then change her position to the opposite side of the screen. So fairly simple, really. We can do this with some logic. So let's go if self dot position uh, dot X, because this is, you know, side to side movement, not up and down, but side to side and side to side is X. So self dot position dot X, if that's less than zero, then Basically, the x value of position on the left side of screen, right? Less than zero, left side, right? If self.position.x is less than zero, what do we want to do? Well, we want to reset the position. So let's set our self.position.x to whatever our window width happens to be. And remember, we define window width way up here. So ours is 960. So if it's less than zero, she's gone off this side. We want to put her at 960, which is the other side, right? The width of the thing. Make sense? All right, so let's come down here. And that is good. So then we need to do the same thing for the other side too. So if self.position.x is greater than whatever our window width is, which is window width. So let's say right side of the screen. We want to do the same thing, self.position dot x, we'll set that equal to zero. So that'll pop her on the other side. So if she goes below zero on the left, we pop her to the right. If she goes off to the right, we pop her onto the left. And then here we just have our regular rec thing from earlier. All right, so let's go ahead and save this and see if that worked. Fairly simple, I'm in my C slash games directory. My virtual environment is turned on and let's run Python aspen underscore platform six dot pi. And when we do, we get aspen here. So if we come around, boop, she pops right on over. If we come this way, yep. We can jump up here, same thing here. We can go this way and she goes this way. All right, fairly simple and uh, yeah, pretty good. We are moving right along. So, all right, that is nice. I really like that. It's like, zoop, zoop. It's like an actual game now. <laughs> right. Oh, can you hear her howling? Hopefully you can't, but man, whew. So, okay, now we've got pretty much everything we want, but we've got this water thing. And when she falls into the water, the only thing that happens is it prints to the terminal, you died, you died, you died. And so maybe we want her to die. I kind of just want her to reset back where she started. So if she falls in, we just want her to then kind of pop back up here, right? I think that's probably better than just dying. Uh, but if you wanted to make the game hard, you could just, you know, have her die and flash up something on the screen that says game over. That's no fun. I think we're going to just reset her. So. Uh, let's come down here. Let's see. What do we want? 
probably in our Aspen player class. Let's find where we're defining our tiles. So let's say reset Aspen if she falls into the water. Right? Let's set a starting position. So let's go self dot and let's say start underscore X and we'll set that equal to X and let's go self dot start underscore Y. And we'll set that equal to Y. Remember when we initiated Aspen, we passed in these X and Y coordinates. So that would be down here in our tile map stuff where we created Aspen. We're putting her at here and here. Basically it pops her in our tile map uh, right here. So those X and Y coordinates we can access and we'll sort of codify them into their own variables by setting self.startx and self.starty equal to those things. Well, now we already have a function we created a while back when she falls into the water and it prints to the terminal, you died, right? So instead of printing to the terminal, you died, uh, let's go find that function. Where is that? Oh, here it is. Where we're checking for a collision with the water. So here we've got if pi game dot sprite dot sprite collide is colliding with the water. Remember that's false. We're not destroying the water. We're just colliding with it. And when that happens, we print out to the screen, you died. Instead of doing that, let's say, well, I mean, we can still do that. That's kind of fun. <laughs> uh, reset Aspen to the top of the screen, starting position, right? And to do that, super easy. We can just create a whole new position vector. So remember when we first created her with our kinematics, we set a position with a vector of X and Y. Well, we're sort of going to do the same thing. Let's just create a new self dot position. And again, this is a vector. So we have it set, set it equal to a vector. And this will just pass in our X and Y coordinates. Well, we change them to self dot start underscore X and self dot start underscore Y. And that'll do it. Now, we might still be moving as we fall. And we probably don't need to uh, reset the velocity. But maybe you do, maybe under certain circumstances you do. So while we're here doing this, let's just do that. Let's self dot velocity and we'll set that to a new vector of just zero, zero. So she's not moving at all in X or Y position. So, okay, that should do the trick. Let's head back over to our terminal, run this guy one more time. And actually let's put the screen and run this guy one more time. And so now we can still wrap around. And she falls in the water, boop, she pops right up back to the top. Falls in the water, boop, right back up to the top. And all right, ah. <laughs> you might wanna play a little sound effect if when she falls in the water, a sploosh noise, like sploosh, <laughs> that'd be fun, right? Uh, whatever, we can play around with that if you want. It's, we've added sound effects to these pie games lots of times in the playlist. You just do it the same way. I'll leave that to you probably. And we are moving right along, boop, and uh, pretty fun. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 200,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Alder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.